Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Final Fantasy VII walkthrough. I've got a very, very quick video here of, uh, of the Bone Village. Um, so this is the next stop in the, the storyline. Uh, however, I'm just really going to dig up a couple of the treasures here and then actually leave. Uh, and then um, I actually spent a lot of time morphing and stuff. So I'm going to do a little bit of a guide as far as uh, kind of morphing, morphing right now. And um, maybe even additional one, you know, much later on in the game once uh, we have more equipment and stuff. But uh, anyway, so here we're going to actually dig up the Lunar Harp first. The Lunar Harp is uh, a key item that is required to continue on with the story. Um, essentially what it does is it makes it so that once you enter the forest, uh, you don't just get the, uh, the continual loop and kind of get stuck there. Um, so again, you, you actually have to have that first, uh, before you enter the forest. Uh, otherwise you will not be able to continue on. Now, uh, I usually set up these, uh, the workers in the same spot. Um, essentially what, I think you can hire, I think it's a total of five workers. And, uh, what they do is actually move to a spot and then, um, once you, uh, blow up the bomb or whatever, um, they will, they will turn and point towards the treasure. So the more of these workers you have, the more likely it is that you'll be able to find the treasure. And, um, obviously placement is going to be pretty, uh, pretty key too. But see, if you see here, these, uh, the, the purple one on the left and then the green one are kind of facing each other. And then if you notice, I tried to line up myself with, uh, the guy on the far right there too. So... Um, you know, essentially it's, it's all about line of sight and kind of triangulating where the, where the treasure is, if that's a, a good term for it. But, um, anyway, so I think this will be, this should be the lunar harp in here if I'd open up the stupid chest already. Um, and, uh, so, so basically what ends up happening is, uh, you, you pick the spot for them to dig at and then they'll put the treasure, if there was one, here in the, uh, treasure box. Now, um, <clears throat> being that we're here, uh, I am just going to dig up the rest of the treasures that, uh, are available for the time being. Um, it, this isn't the last time that you'll be able to, to, uh, dig up, uh, treasure, but, um, for now, there's, uh, there's a couple of good, um, weapons. I think there's two weapons as well as, uh, a mega elixir. So we will, uh, we will dig those up real quick. Now, um, oftentimes... Uh, I, I ended up, I think I ended up doing this probably 10 times total to get all of the, the like unique treasures. Um, otherwise, a lot of times you'll just either end up with nothing or like a potion, which is obviously pretty lame. But um, for the time being, uh, you can get the, I think it's called the bunt line. Um, we'll, we'll have to see here in a few, a few minutes here, but... Uh, the bunt line, if I remember correctly, is a weapon for um, Vincent. And uh, it should be a four slot with double material raising capability. Uh, and then the mop is around here somewhere. I think that's the one I dig up next. Uh, the mop is Sid's goofy weapon that uh, has zero materia slots, but it's got really good physical uh, capabilities. Uh, and actually, that's kind of my main reason for uh, coming here at this point. Uh, again, my my goal here was to uh, was to do a bit of morphing, and uh, I wanted though I wanted to use uh, Cloud, uh, Tifa, and Sid. Uh, and again, that's because they've all got access to these. Uh, these weapons with the zero materia uh, raising capability and then, uh, you know, but, but the good physical stats. And again, the reason for that is because morph, uh, you, I, I think every time you use that command, it, it only does like, I want to say it's 10% of your uh, actual damage. So there it is. There's the mop. Um, so again, um, I think that, uh, you know, just because of the way morph works, it's better to have you know, a weapon that's got really, really good damage capability as opposed to, you know, weapons that are weaker but might have materia raising capabilities. And it, I mean, to be honest, though, too, when I usually go out morphing, I'm not really worried about uh, how much AP I'm getting. You know, that's just not the goal. So uh, there, there, to me, there isn't really much reason to 
uh, worry about that. And again, I mean, to be honest, too, the, a lot of the enemies that you'll be fighting to do the morphing don't really give you that much AP to begin with. So uh, it just doesn't end up being a real big loss either way. So uh, anyways, long story short, that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm sure, I actually, I don't remember who, uh, as far as our characters, our, our current uh, characters, I don't know how many of us have that, uh, um, you know, zero, those zero materia uh, weapons that, uh, that have the good physical stats. I don't remember. Um, but to be honest, I, from this point on, I really typically only use Cloud, Tifa, and Sid. Uh, they're just, you know, the characters that I really like to use for from here to the end of the game. Um, so that is why I'm here now. And uh, after this video, we'll make a little pit stop. I'm going to do a little, um, you know, materia raising slash morphing guide, I guess we'll call it. <clears throat> so, uh, so that one will be next. Uh, this should be the bunt line, if I remember correctly. Uh, yep, so there we go. That's the, like I said, that's the weapon for Vincent. And then this will just be the final uh, final treasure here. And remember, uh, always pick uh, good treasure. Um, the, uh, the Lunar Harp, obviously, we already have. Uh, and then I think the bottom option is, is it normal? I think it's normal treasure. And uh, there really isn't anything unique uh, when you select that option. So, <clears throat> anyways, uh, as always, I hope this guide was helpful and I uh, hope you join me for more videos. Thanks for watching.